<clears throat> we're celebrating new music with Mike D'Amelio and, of course, his his group, his project, Dada D'Amelio. And I know that you have uh, visual art in your in your repertoire as an addition to music. Talk about, and I'm I'm assuming that it's some of your pieces behind you. Is this correct? Yeah, yeah. Those are a few of my uh, okay. Paintings. And yeah. what medium are you creating those in? That's a mixed medium. Uh, this one's uh, acrylic. Yeah, that's mostly just acrylic. That one there. Okay. This one's a combination of acrylic and collage and digital. Uh, okay. Same with that one there. Yeah. So I'm a mixed media guy. I don't like to be. Uh, I don't know. I, I get uncomfortable when I'm stuck in just one medium. Yeah. Too. Well, I know a lot of, you know, artists and musicians, they grew up in an analog world and now you have yeah. all this digital and AI and all this mm -hmm. stuff, you know, at, yeah. at your fingertips. And I know that could be a crutch to some, but also more, more, more colors to paint with, you know, exactly. How, yeah. how do you incorporate that where you're not relying just on the technology to kind of do the work? Um, I, I kind of serve, I always look at it like this. I'm not like a painter or a sculptor. Like I serve and I, I have an idea. And once I have that idea, what's going to serve that idea best. Right. And if it's painting it or painting this area, great. If it's, you know what, actually collage works here, then I'll, I'll cut something out. I'm not afraid to kind of push those boundaries. Uh, cause at the end of the day, I want to serve the idea. So when I'm done, that I go, did I express that idea really well? Um, so I, I just never really considered like how like it has to be purist, which is why I like that Dada name in front of my name, because uh, Dada isn't kind of sort of push those boundaries and kind of poke fun at the the they in the art world, if you will. Yeah, I know Alice Cooper had an album called Dada. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, I don't know that one. I gotta yeah. check. That. It was it was one of his lesser selling ones. Yeah. <laughs> he he probably wants to forget some of those albums he was whacked out during. But um, tell us about these two songs uh, from the Imposters EP. Yeah, something going on in um, Open Window. Yeah. Um, so something going on. Uh, you know what it what it's about is. Kind of, and I think uh, there's a lot of musicians out there that can relate to this is when you're young, you're like, I, I'm, my music is everything to me, right? My art is everything to me. And then all of a sudden you get older and you, you know, married to the kid, you get a job, right? And you got to suppress that, right? So I went through like these years where like I really wasn't creating much. Uh, and then like with COVID and my, my, my daughter was born, I started creating again in, in a very regular way. So something going on was about that something going on inside. And when you suppress that for like 15 years, it's like this outburst of creativity. So really that that song, you know, you know, at the end you hear Corey yell, yell, yell control is about just taking control back. Like, no, I, I am an artist in my soul. And yeah, we got to do things to make money and make our livings. But like, don't let that artist in you or that true person inside of you. Don't suppress that. Um, and then like musically, uh, I really, I wanted like a, a really, a, I was thinking about like cream and, and those iconic riffs like sunshine of your love and specifically politician. Uh -huh. da -da -da -da. Yeah, it was a brave da -da -da. Ulysses, all that great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I really wanted one of those like iconic riffs to kind of hook it together. Uh, and I wanted like chunky blues. So I was thinking like cream, cream meets King's X, you know, was, right. I know what was going on in my mind when I was, when I was writing it. But the Jack, good songs, Jack Bruce and Doug Pinnock, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> bass player, like those are two of my like heroes, right? Um, so I was uh, I was thinking of uh, of those two bands when I when I wrote that. But the really good songs come across like a sneeze, you know. Um, they they happen quick. Uh, if you got to spend too much time writing them, eh, 50 fifty. If it comes out okay. Um, yeah, people often say that, you know, the good yeah. ones are the ones that just kind of keep flowing yeah. out. You know, you don't have to yeah. like grind and spend months on them. Yeah. Uh, then open windows, it, it's a bit of a tougher one um, in in the sense of uh, how emotionally connected I am to that song. And Corey did a 
freaking amazing job on that song. Where were you recorded at? Um, <laughs> all the music was recorded in my pajamas in my bedroom. Okay. <laughs> the so, m- music at home in Cali. Mm-hmm. So when he did his vocals in New York and flew him to you. Yeah, then we I flew in. Yeah, we did vocals in upstate New York. Uh, at, at, at iconically a place called Black Sheep Studios. Okay. The guys from Rochester. Oh wow! And he named it after Lou Grant. Grant. Yeah, <laughs> totally coincidental. Uh, so we had a really funny conversation around that when I was there. Um, so yeah, we recorded the, the vocals live there. Um, the drums on something going on was recorded by, uh, believe it or not, my roommate in college, this master drummer. He runs this uh, website, drummersalmanac.com, like a teaching site. And I just called him up and said, hey, man, like, I just recorded a Corey Clever. I need some drums. And he was like, hell yeah. So yeah, it's kind of, it, it's crazy. Like, that's the advantage of today. But it's also like none of us were ever in the same room at the same time. It's, that's that's kind of wild when you think about it. Well, yeah, that's kind of the new normal, you know. I know. Yeah ideally you love to be in the same room be able to look at each other and you know yeah. feel that live vibe mm-hmm. but especially starting in the pandemic yeah i know a lot of these uh, name musicians they they record tracks for people all day long in their home studio yeah and just you know send them online and yeah they've never met or never been in the same room with these people like billy eilish said she recorded that like album you know her, her big album in her living room i mean yeah well her, her and his brother yeah she and her brother are self-contained that's all yeah. they need you know? yeah 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 um so you do some wild things but but open window um was a, was a real personal one to me uh i have an uncle on my biological side his name is ray d'amelio and he he was an artist. So that was the whole reason I got into art was my uncle Ray. Uh, he's a, a very well known uh, commercial artist like McCann Erickson, Sachi Sachi, all the big agencies in New York City. He lived in New York City. Just he, he's one of like he's just one of those guys like just the coolest dude, man. Just the coolest dude. But well, anyway, there's a he was uh, this is gonna be tough, Jay, but there, he was he was murdered um, yeah. in a triple homicide. In his sleep, someone climbed through a window, climbed up the fire escape through the window and shot him in his sleep and, and then went up and did it to others in the building. It, it was wild. It was all over the news. Not trying to bring the mood down, but like, yeah. like no, that's, that's to me, like drama, especially in the big city. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a way for me writing that song is a way for me to like express that, that moment. Right. Um, so yeah. I told the story to Corey. I mean, you know, Corey's an actor too. You know, he's in. Right platoon and you know so i really set the table of like what the song was about what the emotion was about and even the end where i just said like basically told Corey, make magic happen just listen to the guitar sounds and, and let yourself feel it and man like chills when he when he did that so that's fantastic and um i understand these two songs will be a part of this ep yeah mm-hmm. okay and when when do you plan to release the ep on the 15th. Okay. Yeah. So we are talking very timely stuff. Yeah. And where can people find you online? Oh, it's it's available on all streaming. So, um, you know, YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, Shazam, you name it. Yeah, it'll be. And that's under the name Dada. Dada, Dada D'Amelio. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll yeah, I tried to make it real, real easy to spell for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a different name. I mean, once you see mm. it, it's like you don't forget it. Yeah. You have to, you know, uh, yeah. learn how to spell it, especially yeah. the last part. But, you know, when, once you do, it's it's pretty amazing. Kind of reminds me of that police song, the da, 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 the do, yeah. do, you know. That was one of my favorite songs as a kid, too. So that, <laughs> yeah. I've interviewed Stuart Copeland many times. He is so mm. awesome. Easy, We're coming easy. up on 50 years. I started interviewing Stuart. <laughs> in 1978 he still looks good man oh man he and sting too sting is good yeah. shit wow i playing, can't believe stadium it. stings out there with like billy joel playing stadiums and mm-hmm. you know all, all that amazing stuff so yeah yeah I, yeah i was around the launch of a lot of those great groups like the police and stuff and the yeah i remember in the turdy turd and turd um the albums we did play right was uh uh, the Wall by Pink Floyd, that Police album, and Cheap Trick. Like those are the three I remember. Which, which Cheap Trick album? 
Uh, I think it had, I want you to want me on it. That's okay. Right. In yeah. color, the one that they're on motorcycles. Yeah. Cover. Mm -hmm. okay. I remember those, those three were in heavy rotation. So uh, oh, Cheap yeah. Trick was my favorite. Yeah. that that I had heard the debut album and it was kind of eclectic, but yeah. when they came out with in color and in heaven tonight, and in Dream Police, it was just like a yeah. one, two, three punch. Yeah, and they're they're you know tied to Farner in a weird way too. They opened for them, um, and it was great when they did a reunion show at Jones Beach. They were the opener, so I got to see oh, him wow. again and and meet him again as an adult, um, which was just I was I don't I don't get like starstruck too often, but I was just like. Well, well you know, on guitar, he let me like touch Robin his guitar. Sander is like one of those Mick Jagger guys. It's like he barely ages. His voice is still intact. He still sings, man. I was like, yeah. I'm like, dude, you wow. look like the guy on the cover of In Color, man. That was, <laughs> I know, man. and such cool guys, such cool guys. Oh man. yeah. So I, I still, I totally I, all about the music, you know, no egos and bullshit. You totally, know? man. Yeah, those guys are the real deal. I love them. My my father in law is a huge fan. He 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 refers to him as America's house band, and I like that. I like that. Yeah. Idea. Yeah, I've yeah. interviewed Tom Orman that uh, produced those three albums, you know, and mm -hmm. so many other great albums. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's great to hear the stories behind the scenes, you know, how how professional and hardworking because the work ethic is so important, as you it, know. It is. And I, I really sure your, that. your father, Al Greenwood, you know, yeah. taught you that like it ain't going to be easy. No. So if this is something you want, you got to you got to love to do it. It's not yeah. like you're going to make a bunch of money right off the bat. It's it's really a passion. Yeah. You gotta enjoy the process, right? Enjoy the process and the outcomes are journey. Vary. Yeah. Yeah. The outcomes will vary, right? So yeah. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much. Our special guest has been the one and only Mike D'Amelio and of course his group, Dada D'Amelio. And we wanna encourage you to go out and check out those great songs in the Imposter EP. So Mike, until we speak again, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck with this and all your future art and music endeavors and uh, best to you and your family. You too, Jay. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs>